Super Circus. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, I think yes, we are live. So. Okay. <laughs> Be uh, yes, watch, watch your watch your mouth, Audrey Joe. <laughs> that was that ding was nothing too incriminating. Us coming live. Try to share this one more time. Hey, there it is. Share. All right, if you guys are good, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Boss Hog Liberty Podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I'm your host, Jeremiah Morrill. As always, I'm joined by our co-host, Dakota Davis. Our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. It's a show about folks who are involved in politics. We have promised that our episodes are going to be a fun and easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and folks we just find interesting. Today is a bit of a deviation from that, because as far as I know, our guest has no political involvement no. whatsoever. No, no, no. <laughs> he did drive up this morning from uh, from Georgia. Did you stop in Alabama and vote for vote for a Senate candidate or anything? <laughs> no. I've heard that's getting pretty crazy over there, though, but didn't do that today. Didn't do that. So we've no. got on my right is, uh, is Ben Smith, uh, a native of Newcastle, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll get into Ben's profile here a little bit, but uh, he's uh, been an athlete. He's uh, been a model, an actor. And uh, since he was coming home for the uh, for the, the winter vacation here, we said, That's hey, right. you're in town. Let's get you on the show, and we're going to get uh-huh. to know you a little bit. Uh, and then on the other side of the room is uh, the bride of, uh, of my co-host, Dakota. We've got Audrey Jo Davis now. Yep, that okay. would be great. Getting used to that one. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> you signing your name right on checks? No. Did you sign well, Dakota's checks? Only like half the time. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Dakota, how are we doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. It's uh, a little bit different. Usually I have people over here on Thursdays. My dog's really not going to know what to think whenever there are two nights this week that <laughs> we have a parade of people barraging through the house. <laughs> We're uh, Your dog is going to have a lot to think about this week. Oh, yeah, she is. You're going to have a lot to think about this week, Jeremiah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was enjoying my last little tiny bit of uh, of sanity tonight before we before I came over. The uh, Ben, we, I don't know what happened to me, but... I accidentally bought a puppy or adopted a puppy. Uh, okay. We got puppy fever on, on I, yeah. was it last week, Everybody's I guess? How'd this happen? Uh, Audrey and Sarah, my, my fiance, Dakota and I, we've, we've got a group chat going all the time, and we always send each other dog pictures, and I thought this was just like, just like any other time. <laughs> right, right. And uh, next thing I knew, two hours later, we had, uh, we had, an, we had an agreement Doctor on a dog. price. <laughs> That's right. And we were going to go visiting, and... Puppy I'm, comes home tomorrow night. You seem to be worried about Daisy, <laughs> my German Shepherd. I'm more worried about you. <laughs> Very concerned. <laughs> G- getting through. You seem to be really stressed about this. I am a little <laughs> bit stressed about this. Getting through the first couple weeks is going to be my, my my worry. Uh, after that, I think we're going to be just fine. But uh, everybody, I I just when I read things online and they say, oh, you got to let you know they can't hold their bladder for more than two hours. I'm like, that's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> impossible so we'll see it may end up hating me after it's all over i don't know <laughs> your dad said please pass the popcorn he thinks it's going to be entertaining too <laughs> yeah well it's my parents got a dog about a year and a half ago they got a full-size poodle and uh they've they've been the ones in the family that have always had to go home and take care of the dog and right he's, so he's i'm sure there will be comments <laughs> of things that i've gotten into <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. And I'm just going to have to suck it up. Because if nothing else, it's going to make for really great content. That's right. We'll do anything for content around here. Yeah. Content, Jer. <laughs> for ratings. <laughs> All about the ratings. So, yeah, I, I walked in here with a fistful of cash, and poor Ben, but he just met me, and he watches me bring a cooler in. That's right. And yeah. uh, bring a, about $300 in cash to, to, to pay Dakota. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so we'll just, see the dogs show it's up all, time It's all about trust, <laughs> yeah. It looks like I'm either buying something or selling something or giving him change for the organs that came in the cooler. <laughs> Nobody knows for sure. Nobody knows. We're going to let the suspense go. That way, Zach, my neighbor, whenever he listens to this, he'll be really wondering. like What, what happened? Yeah, what was in the cooler? We should make a T-shirt now that says that Boss Hog of Liberty. What's in the cooler? What's Jared? in your cooler? <laughs> he never said anything when Danny climbed over the fence with a gun. 
He, he did. He, he did. He said that he wasn't home, otherwise he would have said something. He would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some interesting shows. It sounds like it. I like <laughs> we, it. Had a, uh, we had a guest that got sick, my baby brother, Danny. Uh, he lives out by Westwood, so a few okay. miles from town, and he was on the, on the chat here and volunteered to come sit in the empty chair over there. <laughs> and he, by, he just happened to need to drop off a twenty two rifle for me, so... Yeah. The front door was locked, and Danny, <laughs> Danny's like, oh, don't let that stop him. Yeah. He scales the the six foot fence out back and jumps it with a you know with a twenty two rifle in a in a in a case, and he's still locked out. The back door is locked too, so didn't help. Yeah, it was hilarious. I didn't help. I kept hearing the that was the funniest thing because I kept hearing the knocking on the door, and, and uh, Danny's like, hey, I'm here, and I go downstairs and I go to the front door. I'm like, there's nobody here, and then the knocking comes from the back door. <laughs> Which uh, it is pretty much impossible at your house. Yeah, I mean it, it's a six foot privacy fence, and none of the gates can be opened from the outside. So <laughs> typically, that doesn't happen. It's a uh, it's a miracle. So all right, well, so let's uh, let's get to know Ben a little bit. This is literally like I've I don't know I, I too much, but I, <laughs> I I I we've not met before. We've no. exchanged some messages on the internet over right, time, yeah. and you know I'm the I'm the millennial that actually takes the newspaper. So when you were featured on a TV show. Yeah. You uh, you graduated from Newcastle High School. I did. Some time ago. A little while ago. No, yeah. Not as long ago as I not graduated high ago, school. Yeah. yeah. A little yeah. while ago. All right. Uh, and then you've uh, you moved away. I guess you went you went to college or yeah. did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, went to school in Louisiana, then came back up here and finished. Up. Graduated in two thousand and three. Mm hmm. Um, high school must have been a very different place because. <laughs> <laughs> I I did acting in high school, right. and the people who played baseball and basketball made fun of the people who <laughs> acted. I so. know. Hey, we just flip it around. It's usually what happens. Oh, I mean, they don't usually make fun of everybody, but it's usually either one thing flips to the other or whatnot, you know, when you right. get a little older. So you uh, you played baseball, and mm -hmm. then you were... You were drafted. This is like I, I looked mm -hmm. it up and I was like, I don't know. I don't know how this process works. So this right. is this is just going to be me asking stupid questions because I, you <laughs> know, good. I, I I was homeschooled. So I, my brother played <laughs> homeschool basketball in Indianapolis. <laughs> I played like at Blue River Optimus League through the sixth grade, and the scouts didn't pay attention. Yeah. So um, somehow you got drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, I did. And it was like. You know, I, I did. First of all, I didn't know how many rounds they had in baseball. I don't yeah, know how this a, works. Uh, I don't know if you actually, a lot of them. if you hear from anybody yeah. or how no, this, they how this process yeah, goes. They, uh, they have two days actually. The first day is usually around three to five rounds, and they have that pretty much broadcasted online. Or I don't know how they do it now. Right, it has to be something like that. And then the second day, they just have a scroll going online, and uh, whenever someone gets drafted, I guess the scout whoever's with you will uh, call you. Okay, and uh, that's how you know. Then you'll see your name run down the board, then everything will be listed. From there, very so. Cool. What was that yeah. like getting the phone call from the scout? Like where? Uh, I got drafted later. Um, I was supposed to go in the first, probably three to five, six round. I got hurt playing basketball that year, so I only played half my baseball season. And uh, they drafted me in the thirty seventh round. And uh, basically, what they did is they drafted me later. They knew possibly they could get me for really cheap compared to what you would have been sign. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the possibility is still there to sign for that amount, but oh, yeah. uh, just things kind of broke down as we got going throughout the summer and end up going to school. The baseball draft is is uh, off time too, right? It's like late summer. It's it's not. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably the second week of June. Okay, so it's during summer, the season. right around there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, for me, I got drafted out of high school, so I was done for a little while. Right. A week okay. Or two probably. Okay. Gotcha. All right. But the baseball season, I guess, starts yeah. in April. Like right, MLB, right. Yeah, whatever. like MLB, yeah. They're yeah. about halfway, quarter through the season by then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So then you uh, you had the opportunity to, to try to do something with them or to go right. work out with them. or Did you actually get to go to, to any of the minor league stuff or because you were rehabbing it was... No, nah, I ended up... They had um, your rights and that was the extent of yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. I had my <laughs> rights until I either signed with a four-year school, but I actually went to a junior college, I guess, before I went to school in Louisiana, so... What that does is if you get drafted, you can wait all the way up until the next day of the draft, and they still have the rights to you. So they could sign you in January or March or whenever they wanted to, but as soon as that day comes around, then you're open game to everybody else. If they come calling, though, you'll mm -hmm. have a conversation even yeah. today, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. All right. So, uh, and you are a pitcher, as I asked that yeah. question. As uh -huh. we were standing downstairs, Dakota hates it when we book taller guests than he is. And, right. you know, I'm 6'1", six 6'1", one, six six well, one, depending upon mm -hmm. the day, yeah. and I'm dwarfed by Ben. <laughs> So we, it's just that all the guests are usually taller than I am. I'm not a very tall person, so it's it's not like you're making a really 
far stretch, like, oh, he might be taller than me. Like, he's probably going to be taller than me. <laughs> going to have a questionnaire as to how tall our guests are going to be. And then I saw him on TV, and I was like, well, here I am. I look yep. like a dwarf again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of people, though, so you're good. That's all right. So, well, in basketball, obviously, that had to help with basketball. Mm-hmm. So, d- 2003, uh, so you would have been, like, 2001, 2000 to 2003 with the high school yeah. team? Uh-huh. There were some pretty good teams at that time as well. There was, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's, was, the state championship teams were 1932 in what year? 2012. 2012. Okay. All right. Somewhere. So it's after it's you. It's close. Yeah. It's yeah, after, after, after me. Yeah. How old are they? I'm trying to think how old they are. It's probably close. It's probably five years after that. Seven, five to seven. Yeah. My class at Blue River. I can't remember. They they just adopted. I'm so old. They just adopted class basketball right after I was <laughs> I was coming through, uh, and my class at Blue River would have been one of the first classes in the 1A uh, state championship game in 2002. So right okay. after me, a lot of the kids that I went to to grade school with got to, got to do that. It was it was a neat experience for them, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you not did, that he's resent. <laughs> I was not a bas- uh, basketball was my baby brother thing. I was I ran video. I got it like a. You know, this is media has kind of been my thing, right? <laughs> right? So I do the podcast thing, and I ran. I went to for three years. I followed around the East Side Golden Eagles basketball team, which, would, by the way, produced a number of college players. Uh, Brenton Burris played at IU East. I can okay. just and see he, that uh, he was actually the leading scorer there for like I can four see that so clearly until like two years ago. Back, Danny is playing basketball. Danny's doing really good, <laughs> yeah. like just doing awesome at basketball. Somehow, still, Jeremiah is running the video recorder <laughs> and is s- still stealing the attention away <laughs> from Danny. <laughs> it's funny, Danny. Uh, <laughs> we he made some comment. We went to the Indy 500, and uh, one of his old basketball buddies was there. And uh, we, we were at the infield this year, and the buddy Chris Gamble, who was the coach's son, he said, "When the hell did Jeremiah become the popular one?" Because I had all the, you know, we had. Pat McAfee, right. his people showed up from Barstool okay. Heartland to our tailgate, and Jeff Dibbert was there, and Todd McComas was there of Barstool Heartland or Bar, you know, Barstool Indy, uh, and they were hanging out with our people, and it was just right. a, this weird atmosphere, and this guy's like, yeah. how in the hell? What happened? <laughs> so, no, I wasn't, uh, I, I make it sound much more exciting than it was. I was, you know, dressed driving around and would go to Martinsville or Anderson or, you know. I went. I was in an awful lot of high school gyms, <laughs> smaller high school gyms <laughs> doing <laughs> video. So, mm-hmm. fun, fun stuff, though. So yeah, one day, one day I'll get to hang out somebody with the sports be, crowd again. Somebody would be watching, <laughs> like one of Danny's relatives would be watching the video tape, and Danny's like, "Hey, look at what's coming up here," and I can just see like your uh, grandpa or whoever would be like, "Wow, Jeremiah is doing a great job." <laughs> <with the camera." laughs> no, actually, the uh, it was uh, it was more for the coach. It was coach's film. We were we were pretty elaborate in what we did. Um, turning myself up here i'm playing producer and talking at the same time but it was all coaches film so it was it was okay. so that they could do you know whatever they do, do review and make right. their adjustments it was the most professional homeschool basketball <laughs> team you'd ever seen they they, they went to uh, arlington they played arlington their uh, their jv team our varsity team did okay went in there and they either beat them or they lost by one on the arlington oh, court. Really? yeah okay. they were they were ridiculously good that's not bad yeah so played in a bunch of national level tournaments but that stuff video anyway. recorder but the no, video guy man, did a man. Good job that was high it. high definition in the in the early 2000s <laughs> anyway we're here to pick on ben <laughs> <laughs> speaking of video recording like how did you get into acting uh randomly when i came back up to indiana i finished up school at iupui and i worked at la fitness in indianapolis and um I kind of thought about it and never really did anything about it. And a guy came up to me one day and asked me the same thing if I've ever done it. You know, he's like, hey, uh, don't take this the wrong way. You know, (laughs) he's like, have you ever thought about doing modeling or anything? I was like, yeah. He's like, have you done it? I was like, no, I just don't know really what to do. Right. And uh, he ended up being the uh, VP at Wiley Publishing. They do all the books for dummies and a bunch of other series there. Absolutely. And um, so I was on an iPhone Five. So you were in the ads yeah, for the iPhone, iPhone Five, iPhone Five, and then iPad, probably two or three by then. But okay. uh, I got that going, and then I signed with an agency in Indianapolis, and then uh, signed with another one that's based out of Cincinnati, and did that for a few years, and then uh, took the move down to Atlanta. So how mm-hmm. how cutthroat is the the acting slash modeling industry? Is it like really intense, like <laughs> what you would see uh, on TVs or what? Not for what I ever did. Uh, the girls, I mean, I. But they are because that's high. I mean, that's <laughs> kind of what they do. I mean, they're crazy yeah. about that. But more, my modeling is more of like uh, I don't know, not runway or fashion or anything right. like that. It's more just like catalog. 
Yeah. So you're, really you're, you're there to sell a product, right? Sit there to <laughs> wave, <if I> was <laughs> waving or walking or something. No, so it wasn't, wasn't too crazy. So <laughs> this is, uh, I, I feel like this is the only time I will ever get to say this in the history of the show. Half of the people here have IMDb credits. So I know it's a there shock. It's it's me. The uh, <laughs> yeah. surprise. Yeah. The no, didn't see that one coming. Yeah. The uh, there was a f- <laughs> Newcastle. Once again, I don't. I, I'm not an artistic guy, but I right. I, I I try to help when I can. <laughs> and uh, Travis Wyke, friend of ours who works for the paper, he was. Uh, I don't know how he got involved in it or how he figured it out. He wasn't at the paper yet at the time. But there's a lady named Sandy Slavin. I don't right. know if you know her or not. She's a film producer here in town. And she's done a, diff- a bunch of different stuff. She had a okay. little project called Smoke and Mirrors, which was like a a local, <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> low-budget film Okay, uh, that uh, it probably wound up being like 20 or 25 minutes long. And yeah. they were looking for places to film. Mm-hmm. Travis uh, signed my house up for me. <laughs> <laughs> so Labor Day weekend 20, 2013, I think. Right. The uh, They had uh, a, a handful of professional actors came down from Chicago and some locals, and then there were some extras, and I wound up being an extra, and they – Put yeah. my name in there. So if That's you search for my name, there you go. I'm on the IMDb. <laughs> I, I'm not David Ben Smith with right. the professional name. I'm, I've got my original Jeremiah Moore <laughs> yeah. on there. Um, it's a Christian Good name. Yes, yeah, my Christian name. <laughs> so yeah, it was a crazy experience. Though I mean, the, yeah, the amount of work that goes into producing just something like there's that. There's a ton of things that go into it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, people don't realize, you know, they you just have a camera. Right. You know, people walk around. Do or they say what they need to say? And it's like, all right, done. You yeah. know, and you're out of there in 15, 20 minutes. But nah. they shot. Quite work that way. They shot two scenes at my house, and it took the entire day. Uh, one scene, a guy died in my garage. I think he was some sort of. I think he had. He was an overdose or locked. <laughs> if this was something. A, something happened. This was in the movie. It this was right. in the movie. It wasn't no. one of the actors. No. just no. OD no. in your garage. Uh, but they had a real. <laughs> they had a real city of Newcastle ambulance that was there, and oh, I had yeah? just there moved into go. the house like three months before. <laughs> so it looks like I have this huge party, and then an right. ambulance shows up and it leaves with lights on, with a guy in a stretcher, and the, you know, the neighbors are coming out in the yard, going, "What in the hell is going on right. at Jeremiah's yeah. house?" It's like it's like an episode of Trailer Park Boys. That's right. Like where all the like all the people you see in the background that are like watching things as they go on like mm-hmm. uh, apparently those are actual residents of that trailer park oh, are they supposed to be yeah it's like they're they're oh. just sitting there watching trailer park boys while it's being filmed <laughs> like it, they're not extras in a tv show or nothing right. I mean, just, that's how i imagine your neighbors just standing out there watching yeah. dumbfounded yeah well i'm i've provided nothing but entertainment for them <laughs> since i moved in four years ago <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you said you live near White States. That you know, that if you ask around now, they're like, "Oh yeah, Jeremiah, he's oh, yeah. the he's the guy, that guy. <laughs> he's the guy that throws the parties. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's the guy I saw a naked woman jump off his roof. <laughs> <laughs> that's happened <laughs> no more than twice. And a naked man. <laughs> and, a naked and that one nobody wanted at all. <laughs> and no. it wasn't me. That yes. one was not me. So um, yeah. So you did. <laughs> You got into the modeling thing, and right. that led into you moving to Atlanta. Because mm-hmm. I, I guess there's a little bit of an independent art culture, you know, right. film scene here. But Not it, a whole lot, though. Yeah. Like I would think, like Nashville, Tennessee, New York, Los Angeles, or I guess Atlanta has mm-hmm. has Atlanta's really grown the past three or four years. Yeah, but yeah, Chicago a little bit too. They film a lot of the local, like Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, all those TV shows up there. And um, what else they have? Oh, what's the big one that's on TV? Uh, they have the they have the one that's um, in the in the emergency room, right? That's that? that's filmed in Chicago, isn't it? Yeah, it's, there's a, it's one. on A and E Network. Yeah, there's a really big one though. I can't think of what the name of it is right now. Yeah, there's an uh, awful lot of that. I, I, honest, yeah, there's yeah. Brooklyn Nine Nine is yeah. like the one show that, and uh, there's <laughs> the <laughs> Last Man on Earth are about the two shows that I'm religiously watching right yeah. now that are on that are on network TV. We watch Live PD like every night. Oh, that's Live a great PD. show. I, I love, love, love that. PD. Yeah, yeah my favorite. That. My favorite is like whenever the uh, like the trooper <laughs> or the sheriff is pulling over a car for you know not having a tail light or not using their turn signal to signal a lane change, and then they mm-hmm. find like two pounds of meth <laughs> in <a> pipe. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> Like if I had turn signal, yeah. If I had all that meth in my car, I would be. I would try to drive a little bit more cautiously. Yeah, the one of them's from Jeffersonville, right? Yeah, Yeah, that I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. They're they're locals. You have no idea. I do. He got me to watch an episode. (laughs) I I watched it. I I borrowed somebody's Hulu account, and uh, you know. I was able to watch an episode or two. I, I'm yeah. amazed, once again, being somewhat techie. I, I have no idea how in the hell they have the technology to broadcast that stuff up, 
in oh, real yeah, time that's crazy. and then and produce it. That's just it's mm. nuts. Yeah, I'm always amazed. Like whenever the camera guy is like in a dead sprint following <laughs> <Right>. the <laughs> yeah. police officer, I'm like, holy crap! Like, Cameras is, are big too. It's not yeah. like they're little handheld. Yeah, and like they have camcorder. like really big mics on them because <laughs> they can pick people up as they're sitting in their car and they're on the opposite side. So right. you know, it's not like it's just a little like it, it's not like they're using their iPhone to broadcast it back to the NE headquarters in New York. <laughs> like this is, it just blows me away. I, I think about that almost every time I watch the show. Mm-hmm. So, so that was reality TV, and then bringing us full circle, you, this reality TV thing you did with yeah. the, it was called the Big Time, right? Or it was sponsored right. by Budweiser? Yeah, it was sponsored by Budweiser. We really should yeah. have had him a Budweiser here. We screwed that up badly. Oh, yeah, we really yeah. did. Oh man, I didn't oh. even think about that. Damn it! Oh, we failed. <laughs> this is why we're going to be the second rate We Are Libertarian <laughs> show for the rest of our time. <laughs> we're never going to catch Chris Spangle and his his numbers. Nope. All right, so. So how did how does that how do you get hooked up with that? Because it had been some time since you're you know they didn't go down the yeah, list of was... 2003 baseball draftees and get to <laughs> no. Ben Smith and go hey <laughs> no. that's our guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> they uh, it was from uh, one of our I don't know what he was exactly at the time, but it was in uh, a person from one of my summer leagues. I think they contacted a lot of summer league GMs and everything like that for all the college kids that had been done to see if they still had people's contact or email or things like that. Then they I think sent it out to everybody. And um, somehow I just randomly found it in my spam. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, why did they send me something? I opened it and it ended up being that. And it I looked somewhat just, legitimate. I was like, you know what? You know, why not? Yeah. You know, I'll give it a try. And I uh, ended up sending on all kinds of paperwork in. And then I think they called me and we talked on the phone. And then we had probably like a Skype or something like that after that. And then uh, they flew me out to LA for a week. We had all our uh, kind of like a little tryout. You know, and they had um, just different ways they were rating us and judging us to see who they'd want on the show, and then they were interviewing us. And it was almost like a gong show kind of a it thing. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Just And then you had all kinds of – we had to do, like, a psych test and blood test and just everything to make sure, you know, like we weren't crazy or something. I don't know. And then uh, yeah, <laughs> it kind of went on from there, and they weeded a few people How much out Bud Light do you drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, that's just enough to make them happy. <laughs> exactly. I have one sitting on the bench with you. <laughs> But yeah, they required the entire show to be done buzzed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, Ed. but yeah, they yeah they hooked it up though. So yeah. you get uh, you you did that, and then the I guess the winner was going to get some sort of a an agreement or a relationship with them. Is yeah. it the Mets at the? T- is that it what was I the Mets? Yeah, yeah, it was the uh, Brooklyn uh, minor league team. Okay, They're probably, it was probably single A. Right, where they usually start everybody out, but I believe that was where they were based out of. So you'd be following. Well, I guess if you if this had worked out, you'd been. Tim Tebow would have been following in your footsteps. Yeah, I actually had probably the best deal out of everybody because people don't know my game that I got out on, my clock broke. And so I had no idea what was going on. I had flashing symbols going through, and you had to match the two up at the same time. Okay. And mine was broke, and the other people were doing there, so I just kind of stand in there. <laughs> and that's my excuse. I probably wouldn't have won it anyway. <laughs> I probably got third, but... Uh, after I lost that, uh, Tom House was our mentor, and um, he's a legendary kind of pitching coach now. Now he does a lot with the football players like Brady and Manning and Drew Brees and basically everybody you can think of. Huh. So I rode home with him, and um, he was gonna, or he offered to have me come out to California to train with him for two or three months. Then he was just going to bring everybody in he knew. Um, and basically what he said with the people he was going to bring in would be at either – you know, at that time I was upper 20s, mid 20s. They're like, doing this is either going to end really fast or you're going to move up really fast. Right. <laughs> but uh, I ended up, I don't know, 